so in the last episode we built this ship the albatross and we're going to be using this thing now to trade with some other colonies on the map and there's a few things we still need mainly a tier 5 medic bot as this new mod cybernetic organism and neural network has a lot of really cool modifications we can install in people though they do require a huge medical skill it does cost a lot of research too but we have six research tables up and running we do also have another researcher that's about to join us malone who's got 10 intellectual burning passion for it and she's ugly so she works quicker and she's a hard worker so she's gonna work quicker and so she's gonna be doing research really quickly in the last episode we also captured a few people from the gray crag union and it's really hard to get these guys to join us like pig has 72.2 resist she is really good though like she's magically gifted with the arcane conduit trait so we can turn her into a caster class and she gets 40 percent extra mana regen she's also got 10 intellectual with a minor passion for it and she's too smart so she's gonna learn it quicker and i think she'd be a perfect candidate for a necromancer because pig is 72 resist and it's going to take forever to recruit her we're going to use our last orb of conviction on her essentially this item will just convert someone and it does cost 2k and you can only use it once but yeah pig did join us and we could actually turn her into a necromancer right now and possibly even a lich for using up all of our unrefined magikite for this we have literally nine left but we made two of these necromancer spell lich forms which costed 360 each we got a bunch of the unrefined magikite from doing mining runs in the previous episode but yeah we're going to make a unfinished torn script not the book this is actually cheaper than the book and the necromancer will potentially only have like one spell i think but yeah so we got both our necromancers over here llama and Sela. llama is actually already a lich but llama wrote on the script and it's now a torn script necromancy we can have pig read this and it's gonna give her one ability fog of torment which is actually not terrible i guess but yeah so pig is now a necromancer we're gonna have her read her ultimate lich form ability and same with Sela. actually we've had Sela for a while but we're gonna turn her into a lich now we gotta actually cast the ability after they're done casting this they're both gonna be liches which allows them to fly they can now cast death bolt themselves it also does lower their movement down by quite a bit and they work a lot slower and learn less quickly however they never need to sleep or eat anything so they're gonna be working around the clock and yeah they're just gonna be permanently researching pretty much well we're getting pretty late game i guess 11 people just got malaria our druid sashiko does have the ability to cure diseases however and malaria is apparently not that bad if we just put one point into disease knowledge she can cure that one we also apparently got to put one point into effective treatment so we'll have 100 chance to cure it and then we'll put two points in a natural healing which will lower the mana cost of it because yeah we're gonna be spamming this thing we'll drop one on mk she is our lightning user and her eye of the storm ability is definitely one we want to have ready to go at a moment's notice i wonder if our monk seal can just meditate it off and yeah he can he just meditated off the malaria <laughs> That's actually pretty sick. Our Technomancer Codex apparently has a reduced immunity gain speed by 6%. So he's going to get over it slower than other people. We'll just cure him of it next, I guess. He's also really useful. He's our builder and our researcher. And yeah, Codex, you can get up now. You're good, dude. Since we ran out of Unrefined Magikite, I had our zombies mine around outside the base. And we got a bunch more. And our Craptor Bot just made us a Mage Spell Siphon Mana. And I'm not sure if Druids can actually learn this. And Craptor Bot was running away with it. But yeah... Okay, Sashiko can actually learn it. I guess any caster class can learn Siphon Mana, which is a really cool ability. We can have her steal mana from Llama, who has basically unlimited mana. Like, she's down to 98. We can have Llama come over here to our massive pile of undead, and we'll actually just consume Basculo. He's not that good. And we'll have her just raise more undead, and she just raised five new undead. We'll also dismiss Lucy, who's got 14 melee. We'll re-raise her later on when we're getting invaded on. And like this girl, Banioxo, also sucks. We're gonna consume her too. We'll actually send Llama over here a bit. I don't want Sashiko to see these dead bodies. Like MK came over here to haul some of that stuff because the clothing actually just came through the wall when we consumed that undead. But she observed five rotting corpses just by walking over here and she can see through these embrasures. That's why I have a wall here to just kind of make it so people can't see. Yeah, unfortunately MK came over here and then and frog came over here to get a simple meal that was apparently on that undead's body i'm not sure how good that's gonna taste but yeah he observed five rotting corpses too but anyways so we can have shashiko just keep siphoning llama's mana and we're gonna have her go cure more diseases while we'll have llama just keep eating more bodies and we'll just keep rinse and repeating that process so sashiko ended up curing everyone of malaria minus one of our prisoners and we're now going to go on another trade mission this time we got a lot more trade goods and this time we're not going to be hitting up any tribal villages we're going to be going over over to Riginus. Okay, they didn't have anything we wanted, so we're gonna relaunch and head towards Macawood. We left with 551 fuel, and we're down to 537, so it didn't take actually that much fuel. Only like 15. 
it's not bad. Those guys didn't really have anything we wanted either. And so I think we're just going to do kind of a circle to some of these other Northeast Omatitian colonies. And hopefully we have enough fuel to make it all the way back home. And oh yes, we found it. I was losing a lot of hope actually because we hit up multiple colonies and they only had like one bot each. And I was starting to think like, what is the chance they're going to have an ER5 base station? They also have two kitchen four base stations. Okay, I really want to get all those bots. Let's first see how much silver we can scrounge up. So we're at 12k. We traded off some stuff to the other colonies. We also brought along this thrumble for armchair that we crafted in the last episode. We're not going to use that around base, so we're just going to sell it off for 2k. And here's the main stuff we brought along. A bunch of flake, 186 of it, and that's going to sell for 9 bucks a pop. We brought along 691 smoke leaf joints as well for 7 bucks a pop. And then we'll sell all the psych IT as well, 170 of it for 650 a pop. And that's going to bring us up to almost 10k. So with 22k, is that going to be enough for the ER base station and both kitchen bots? No, it's not. We'll just pick up the ER and kitchen bot for now, and we might come back for that other kitchen four bot. Oh, I actually didn't even see this, but these guys also have a orb of souls, which is really good, and they have an orb of conviction too. We'll pick up the orb of souls and orb of conviction just in case wait no way that's actually the perfect amount of silver for both of those what are the chances of that we used our last orbit conviction earlier to convert over our necromancer pig and we might have a prisoner that's going to have a lot of resist that we just don't want to go through all of that so we picked up the bots and the orbs and we're going to head back home we're pretty far away but we still have 381 fuel we started this whole journey i think with like 600 so yeah we'll definitely have enough fuel to make it home and oh yeah we made it back with 213 remaining still but yeah we got our kitchen bot up and running and holy cow that thing is making kibble fast and it's actually now deciding to make psych it so yeah it can make trade goods for us and it definitely can make meals too i don't know if it can roll smoke leaf joints i think it can i can't actually command it to do anything it just automatically does tasks and maybe actually i'll make a separate stove so that we can have the kitchen bot make psych it in a different room than the room that we need to cook at but yeah since we researched the neural network we can now make a ton of modifications like these power arms <laughs> look pretty broken for our monk they do 25 dps and have 38 percent armor penetration and do 125 percent extra blunt damage which i think if he's attacking with his fists that's going to be considered blunt damage since they're power arms they also make it so he can carry more stuff that's actually pretty cool see so yeah, i think we're going to make those first they do cost 25 gold 100 plasteel and six advanced components and we have all that i believe yeah we have 26 advanced components left and 800 plasteel so we can actually make more stuff like this muscle wire which infuses with all of a person's muscles in their body, enhancing movement speed, increasing global work speed, max HP. I'm wondering if that's like all of his body parts are going to have 50 more max HP. If so, that's pretty insanely OP because some body parts have only like 20 HP. It also is going to increase movement speed by 10% and part efficiency by 33%. I'm guessing you just install this in like somebody's leg or something and it will increase that leg's efficiency and like HP and stuff. That's got to be it, right? Like there's no way it just applies to all the muscles i mean it says a complete fusion with channel wiring of all muscles in the body so i don't know it seems a bit op if that's the case so while we're crafting those enhancements we have three thrombos in our territory and i would like to test out seals combat strength on these thrombos before the enhancements and after although they came here yesterday and they're only going to be here for a few days so i don't know if we'll have time we will test his ability before the enhancements though and with one hit actually he got a massive multi-strike on this thrombo he also got hit the thrombo did bruise his left leg it's hit with a tiger strike though and okay yeah that was a lot of hits monks just attack really fast and that was one of his abilities but yeah he dodged the next attack Got another multi-strike. Another one, I think, actually. He only hit one regular attack, and then he got another multi-strike. And then, okay, two regulars. He's not getting tagged, though. I think he's dodging most of the Thrumbo's attacks, and he just destroyed the crap out of that Thrumbo. That thing only tagged him twice, and yeah, you can meditate those injuries off. We're gonna have him try to take on the other two. Maybe that was a fluke of some sort. And actually, no, it doesn't really look like it was a fluke. I mean, this time he did get wounded a lot more. The last one got him a bit better, but yeah, he's able to take out three thrombos before any modifications. One thing I just realized is the muscle wire requires 2,500 silver, and so we actually have not been making it. Looks like we need to go out on a trade mission and get some more silver. 
So as we were loading some goods into our ship so we could pick up that 2500 silver, four of our colonists got the plague, and I think that's one of the worst diseases. Sashiko did get two more level ups though, and she can now cure the plague, just like she cured the malaria from earlier, and this is going to be a lot easier because only four colonists have it. But yeah, we cured every one of the plague, and we sent Frog with a semi-loaded caravan over to a couple of these northeast Omotithian colonies. First we're going to hit up Styles, then we're going to hit up Thebrad. Originally the plan was to come over here and just pick up 1k silver because we did have 50 but these guys do have a builder for base station and builder bots are really useful We're gonna see if we can just scrounge up enough money to pick it up It's 6k like we made a bunch of alpaca wool parkas We had nine good ones and three excellent ones and then just a bunch of random clothes that are just lying around the base Some random weapons and we had three thrombo horns from thrombos We killed a long time ago and their horns were just kind of sitting around the base just right there They're gonna give us over 5.6k That's almost enough for the builder for bot and we still have a good amount of stuff Like we had a bunch of mechanoid parts that we've been getting from shredding mechanoids and these are part of the what the hack mod, but we're not going to be using that mod because I don't feel like we need to at this point, at least not with this playthrough. We're already really strong. But yeah, we'll sell them all the mechanoid parts, the advanced mechanoid ships, and then we have some contraband that we can sell them. The flakes, smoke leaf joints, and psych IT is going to give us 2400 and that's pretty much all their money. After doing that, we're still going to hit up Thebrad as we got a bit of extra money. Over at Thebrad, we couldn't really afford anything they had, so we sold them an extra statue we brought along for around 700 and with that, we headed back home. Back at base, as you can see, our workshop is a little messy. We got a lot a lot of wood still just kind of sitting around this was our wood stockpile room but over here on the left we got crafter bot 2 working on the muscle wire he's almost done with that on the right we got crafter 1 working on this unfinished bionic arm and krika what are you doing apparently i had him on the wrong drug policy usually i let people if their moods below 35 percent smoke smoke leaf joints and that keeps them from having mental breakdowns but not krika we want him to have mental breakdowns so he can have inspirations and we can make legendaries but yeah we finished the muscle wire and the advanced bionic arm we're making one more modification though this Berserker ship costed two advanced components, some psychoid leaves, and 250 gold. We're down to like 100 gold now. But essentially, this chip can be installed into Seal's head and it will increase his fighting capabilities. We did also get the Builder 4 bot up and running, and Builder bots are probably my second favorite bots after the Kitchen bots, just because they can not only build holy crappy builds so fast, not only can they build super fast, but they can also mine. So we ended up making the Berserker chip and we're about to install a bunch of parts into Seal. So we're going to start with the power arms, and you would think that power arms means he would be getting two arms but no you just install it into one of his shoulders and it might be like two arms coming out of one of his shoulders or something i'm not sure how that works because it doesn't say power arm it says power arms and yeah that operation was successful his left arm is now way more efficient at 150 percent efficiency he does more blunt damage he gets more carrying capacity as well and a lot more dps he now has 15 melee dps i do think though his power claw that's installed in his right hand is actually lowering his dps though so after removing the power claw Seal's DPS did go up, except for we installed an advanced bionic arm in the arm that he had the power claw, which raises his manipulation, so he's going to do more DPS. I'm going to do a test right now, and I just made an extra save and spawned in a random colonist. But essentially, I installed power arms into this girl's right shoulder. In her left hand, I installed a power claw, and she's now doing 7.37 DPS. If we just straight up remove the power claw and replace it with a regular hand, her DPS actually goes up to 9.5. So yeah, in this game for melee characters, you only want to be letting them use one weapon. That way, every time they attack, they won't cycle to to one of their weaker attacks. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, I know. Like, it seems like in combat, having a power claw on your right hand that you can stab someone with is better than having no power claw, but that's just not how this game's combat works. We also ended up installing the muscle wire, and the way this works is you install it into one of their legs, and it increases the leg efficiency, max HP, global work speed by 10%, and also movement speed by 10%. It doesn't say that on here, but under the detail description, that says that's what it does. We now got two more operations. This next one, the exoskeleton armor, is actually a bit scary. It's a full body exoskeleton armor transplantation very very dangerous for the patient only the bravest and toughest man undergo this surgery so the new insectoid i want to say expansion just came out i did a video on it and i really want to do a series on that so we're now going to go for the end game win condition we sent out frog on a final trade mission and we loaded him up with just a bunch of random stuff we had we ended up hitting up a Chidna's thicket and sea well and they were able to buy the rest of our goods and with that silver we're going to call up our ally the northeast omatithian and we're going to request the location of two persona cores it's going to cost 1500 silver, or I guess no more locations are known, so I guess we're only going to get one. This Persona Core is fairly close by, it's at this item stash, and there's an unknown threat there. And yeah, we landed right by the Persona Core, and I guess there's no one here. We can just pick it up. 
So with that Persona Core, we installed one final part into Seal's brain, a combat AI, which increases consciousness, and that's awesome. It helps pretty much everything. But the main thing is it lowers mental break threshold by 18%, and at this point, Seal has virtually no chance of being able to have a mental breakdown. We then loaded Seal up on our ship with a bunch of goods and sent him out on a solo mission to try to end the game by himself. But yeah, so we brought Seal a bunch of materials, mainly this Builder 4 base station. It does need power though, so we did bring along a unstable power cell, which we stole from the mechanoids. The mechanoid clusters have a bunch of these, and usually they end up blowing up, but we were able to salvage one. We got the Builder bot up and running, and we brought along a bunch of granite blocks, and actually we're gonna pick up all these meals too. Now what I'm hoping here is we brought enough granite blocks so that we can wall in this ship, which I don't know if we're gonna have enough. The builder bot can mine though, so if we need to, we could potentially mine out like this compacted steel and use that for walls. But yeah, so our win condition is we start this ship reactor, and essentially that's going to alert everyone that's nearby, including this mech hive. <laughs> but it's only got three and i'm wondering if this is like a cheesy way to end the game i don't know if they expect you to be able to do this with one person but one thing about rimworld is when you only have one person you end up getting raided by not that many things i think it's when you have three people is when the really serious raids start Let's see what they got this time Oh, they actually got quite a few people. So it looks like Seal's not going to get off that easy. I thought they were going to only send like max three people at us. But we'll say though, one thing about the way raids work in RimWorld is they send raiders based on the strength of the colony that they are attacking. And this colony has way less strength, or should I say wealth rather. Our wealth on this map is only 72k versus at our main base. Okay, that guy just hit Vitaly in the back. Versus at our main base, our wealth is like 400k. Even if we didn't have a monk that was super geared up, we could have sent like, I don't know, three or four colonists over here that were really strong. And that could have been much easier than defending our base. My base actually kind of sucked too. It would lag really bad when I would get raided. And I think I figured out why. I'll go more into that on my next series. But yeah, these guys are now charging in. Vitaly is all alone. Seal just one shot Vitaly. These guys are actually running by us. And I think they're going for our ship. We can't allow that so we're just gonna chase these guys down and Wilcox is down Katsumi is down as well I don't know what that is said as some kind of explosion that's about to go down or someone healing him or I don't know what's going on with that but yeah seal has not been tagged yet like these guys don't have good enough weapons to penetrate seals defenses and I kind of want to go over like why he's able to mitigate so much damage at least I think and yeah okay these guys are running we actually got a few of them knocked out, and three of them are actually knocked out. Seal did finally get tagged. He is barely injured, and we're going to have him just meditate those injuries off, and yeah, they're already gone. So the reason why Seal is able to mitigate so much damage is because of this skill, Ignore Damage. It increases his damage mitigation, which is then reduced if the clothing he's wearing is too heavy. Earlier on in the series, though, we crafted him this Thrombofer Dark Robe, which is giving him a lot of armor, and it doesn't weigh that much. Normal body armors like power armors can weigh up to like 16 kg. And here we go. They're switching it up a little bit. Minerva is trying trying to siege us now and they're also raiding us so we got a double siege raid thing going on unfortunately for them though i don't know if they're going to be able to even set up their siege camp and they're just sending us supplies basically yep they're running and i actually just noticed they give us a lot of steel and some components so we could actually make some turrets out of these i want to test out one of seal's modifications on this other group so with his berserker chip that he has in his head he can actually go berserk and we'll just let him go berserk on these guys i don't know if that increases his combat capabilities or not i can't really tell he's beasting right now but he's kind of always really beasting he was being dumb by chasing that guy too we can also deactivate and activate Berserk at will. I'm not sure what the point of it is. If it doesn't make him stronger, I don't know why we'd want to use it. We can activate it again over here. And he just kind of sits there for a little bit too. With it active, he's doing 24 DPS. With it inactive, he's also doing 24 DPS. So I don't think it actually helps his DPS at all. And that's it for the Minerva. Yet another failed raid, although they had the right idea there with the double raid. And here we go, we're actually getting raided by a different faction this time. The assassins are raiding us. And it's weird that we haven't been raided by the assassins more and like the shadow circle, because those guys are really close to the landed ship. Instead, we've been constantly getting raided by the Grey Crag Union and the Minerva, which are much farther away. This time the assassins are raiding us and they're sieging us at the exact same time. But it looks like we're gonna be able to solo these raiders first. And we actually kind of have a pretty OP maze system set up right now. I mean, it's not anything special, but really anything 
that provides us cover is going to be OP. Because Seal is just that much of a beast. And yeah, the raiders are running. We're just going to start loading these guys into the Crypto Sleep Caskets. And now for the Siegers. These guys did build their mortar. But unfortunately, they're not going to be able to load it up. Or are they? Seal's actually getting kind of tagged here a little bit. And they summoned a elemental, by the way. A lesser fire elemental. Maybe that will be what they needed to summon to take out Seal. Maybe that will be his match. This thing's actually tanky. Never mind, actually, it went down. And okay, yeah, they're running. Immediately after that tribes people raid, we're now getting sieged by Manurba yet again. They're about to bring us some more materials. Before they even are able to land their materials in, I think we're going to be able to take them out. Yeah, they ended up running and not sending in their materials because we took them out too fast. They called up command and they were like, yep, it's a no-go <laughs> this time. <laughs> This is just so stupid, dude. What are we even doing here? 2.4 more days, just get me out of here. They only got about nine hours left, and the Treaty of Landoa, the tribes people, did send another raid at us, which it's not looking so good for them. They're already trying to run. Well, one hour left until the ship's ready. 0.5 hours, and it looks like that's it. The reactor is now ready for a liftoff, and we're launching this baby. Alrighty, well, we escaped with Friss. That was just a random colonist that attacked us. Kangaroo ended up joining us too. So we just loaded him up in the Crypto Sleep Casket and then we got out with Seal. Now it says the rest of these guys did not escape, but that's actually simply not true. Seal came back for them and rescued them.